Hello and welcome to my channel and welcome to the Alchemy series. We are on step six, stage six, which is distillation. It, it was actually the uh, reading I did for Virgo last week that actually prompted this whole series. Distillation is that purifying step, purifying uh, 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 the soul, refining it through you know, the stages of, of, of fire and emerging stronger um, on the other side of this. This is, I, I use the, and forgive me if you don't understand the reference here, um, you've got to this stage. To, to get to stage six, you've done some phenomenal work. And I likened it to Tesco value whiskey with the top shelf whiskey. The aftermath of, the, of this makes you top shelf. Tesco value, obviously I'm, I'm not getting a Tesco value here, however, you know, it's still kept, it's still enough to be sellable. It's still enough to have a place on the shelf um, in the large supermarket. However, the end of this process, your value just goes up and up and up, metaphorically speaking. Uh, for some of you, literal as well. Um, so this is that refining process. This is about really taking those, the unnecessary aspects of ourselves, the the deeper level, you know, shedding parts of that side, they're, they're just, they're, they're not necessary. They're, they're, you, you'll know individually what those are, what we're carrying at this point. And this is that process of just letting it, letting it go, letting it just fold away. Strangely enough, Lilith didn't have a distillation card and I'm baffled by that. However, um, I was thinking about your, um, your animal message and I was, I was at loss, if I'm honest, at this stage, so I actually took a card from the Oracle, um, the Spirit cards, and we got Dear Spirit. So you've been asked during this stage, awareness, sensitivity, and gentleness. Gentleness is my strength, sensitivity is my power. Deer are highly sensitive and aware creatures, picking up even the slightest crackle of a falling leaf, the faintest scent in the wind, or the smallest movement of a distant creature. Deer move lightly and swiftly through their surroundings, mostly unheard and unseen. Like this, deer spirit is the way of sensitivity and gentleness. Now this, with the mostly unheard and unseen, a lot of this process during this stage of alchemy is quite mundane. It's bringing the spiritual energy into your everyday practices, unfazed by external circumstances, finding the, the joy, finding the inner peace, in the daily mundane. And this process can be over a certain period of time. It doesn't, doesn't, it's not an overnight process. Um, but it's, it's the, the biggest thing that happens in this uh, aspect is the more that we embody it in a daily habit, the more that you shift your frequency, the more things start heating up in terms of frequency dissonance. So for example, you may find more people, activities, start falling away from you. Um, don't take it personal. Don't hold on to anything that doesn't have strong roots in this stage because people will either see that frequency and climb or they won't be able to cope with that frequency and fall away. Again, it's nothing personal. It's not an attack on you. It's not a doubt on them. It's just energetic. Everything is frequency. So whatever falls away, let it fall away. Whatever is supposed to stay will stay. Whatever's supposed to climb will climb. And that's a difficult aspect, especially, this is kind of like <clears throat> where the, those that are in your life that are not on a spiritual path in some format, it becomes very difficult to maintain a close, strong relationship with. And that's, it, it, it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, they can grow, yes, but that's that's the process here. Some want to grow, fantastic. Others don't. Others are not here to have a spiritual path. They, you know, their purpose in life might be to find contentment in the mundane and you know raise a family or, or have a certain business. There's certain things that you know we can't know the answers to. So. Sensitivity plays such an important role in our lives. Sensitive beings are the way, <coughs> pardon me, are the way showers, seeing and feeling things that most others haven't yet. So this is you in your daily habits, your daily practice, being the way showers. And 
they bring this gift of awareness for all to learn and benefit from. The most powerful healers are also the most sensitive. In the old male patriarchal culture, sensitivity is labelled a weakness, but it's truly a power. It's the most sensitive telescope that gathers the most light and sees the farthest into space, and the most sensitive microscope that detects the smallest elements. When scientists can't detect the existence or intelligence of some life forms, it's often because they haven't yet developed sensitive enough equipment to detect it, not because it isn't there. Dear Spirit Medicine sees and feels through the barriers that separate us from others, including other life forms and from the mystery and magic of life. In this awareness, we move through life in the spirit of love, appreciation and respect for all beings. Dear Spirit also has the understanding of what's necessary for balance in the world and has the ability and capacity to at times sacrifice for the higher good of all. Dear Spirit is a gentle reminder for you to recognise the great power of sensitivity and gentleness within you. Acknowledge and honour this power and let it guide you in your thoughts, words and actions. This is a strength to draw upon even in the most challenging times, allowing you to transition through them with no harm to yourself or others. Dear Spirit aligns you with the heart that connects with all beings and there isn't a more potent, powerful force in the world. So, Raven is still with you at this point. I was getting a heavy energy of Raven and that's, synchronicity is going to take you it's going to take up a huge space in your life. Follow the nuances, follow the signs, follow the synchronicities. It won't lead you astray, especially if you're following your heart in that sense. Stay grounded during this stage um, because we can go off a little bit wobbly. At this stage, there's a, mo there's a lot more energy that's coming in at the crown chakra, which can cause a little bit of dis dis discomfort, maybe a bit of distortion. Um, it shows any, imbal in, any imbalances, you know, like um, masks that we're still wearing in certain circumstances, like, um, you know, where our ego's probably still a little bit um, uh, inflated. Um, the, big, the bigger picture becomes more clearer. And obstacles that come your way, the more easily, you know, with dear spirit, it can, it can sense that, that faint of the leaves rustling you're going to know your sensitivity to energies is going to be very, very heightened. So we're going to take the energy of distillation. We are going to see what your higher self wants to say, what your lower self wants to say, what has accumulated so far, what your advice is, and what your potential outcome is to take us to coagulation. Okay, distillation, we have the Ace of Pentacles. Now we start seeing the gifts. The door is open, it's not fully open yet, but there's a lot more flood of light that's coming in. So lots lots of energy coming in, um, lots of gifts coming in, lots of energetic uh, upgrades. Interesting. I'm kind of getting as a gift here, but wrapped in a in a different way. Now, you might you may find yourself dealing with a situation that you can't fix or change, and the reason being is that you're supposed to, you're just required to find peace in the situation. What that is, I have absolutely no idea. It's going to be different for all of you, but it's going to help you to become unaffected by external circumstances. Ultimately, in, in the ultimate goal of this is to reach the sun. I mean, I know the last card is the world, but the ultimate goal is the sun, the soul, the soul's gold, you know. And sun is acceptance. So the, you could have some sort of situation during this stage. What your higher self wants you to know? What your lower self wants you to know? Recent past. Nice. Your advice. Okay, interesting. And potential outcome. Nice. You're going to start seeing energies um, more clearly. The unseen is, is going to be start to be seen. We have the two of wands. The two of wands is a situation here where you, you're affecting other people dramatically. 
Two of Wands for me is representing Mars in um, Aries, so the tower hits the Emperor. During this process, we've seen a lot of energy towards the Empress. You know, we had the, the Venus in, in Aquarius, Venus uh, has played a significant part, so the Empress energy, the, 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 the feminine energy. This is triggering an, a masculine energy within yourself, but also in the external environment as well. So we've got two of wands with the page of swords, the nine of cups and the hermit and the four of cups, four of pentacles, the hierophant. You're, when you reach this stage, you've got to accept that you're triggering others to start the journey. Um, who that is, what that is, again, you could be here to trigger one person, you could be here to trigger 250,000 people, who knows? So many different aspects. But there's an energy of, of, of triggering something here and you're, you, that could be the, the situation that you're dealing because you can't do anything about it. It's their, it's their journey. Um, you can't fix or change it. You kind of got to be an observer here. So we've got the Ace of Pentacles. What your higher self wants you to know is the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands is the wounded warrior, the wounded healer. Um, I think I mentioned in one of the earlier, if I didn't, I'm going to mention it again. There was a, a it was on koala or something like that. And somebody's interpretation of the of a light warrior was quite interesting. A warrior of light is, uh, by this person's definition, was um, somebody that embodies hope. Somebody that has hope that they can be better, that the world can be better, that the people around them can be better. And your higher self is, to, is saying here that people can, you know, lead by example. It's the moon in Sagittarius, so the high priestess meets um, temperance. And I kind of feel like the High Priestess and the Temperance are whispering together here, saying the moon's in Sagittarius. You know, the, that's the archer. It's, it's like you're almost there. There's a lot of energy and power that's behind the next steps to keep going. Your lower self is in the sun. You're actually going to gain a lot of power from the sun at this stage. You've, you've taken on a lot of energy in terms of the feminine. Now it's time to start embodying that masculine energy as well. To, I mean, we've already done the sacred marriage to a certain extent, but the sun is a powerhouse. There's also, you are more susceptible to solar flares during this stage. So you might be getting a lot of, like I said, crown chakra activations. It might be flooding you with a lot of energy that feels a little bit, you know, wobbly. The nine of wands for me is a kind of Chiron. Chiron is the wounded healer. Chiron is those that, that wound that you carry throughout this life until you recognize it and and see it for what it is do you heal it fully hmm, time will tell but one of the best ways to find your purpose is to work out your chiron heal it and then um or at least you know make steps to 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 improve it and then teach somebody else the process it's also a nod for me to tell you about something i missed from the last spread um with the moon and the, and the hangman that appeared, it's being mindful of your, of, of, of the moon. Um, for, for, for feminine energies that have a monthly cycle, this, this is utilizing the moon as to when you're full of energy, when you're not full of energy. Really, you know, highlight that journal to, to find that pattern. For those of you that are not on a feminine monthly cycle, this is about recognizing the power of the houses. The, the hangman represents the 12th house, Pisces. 12th house and the moon is a time to take yourself away, whether that's just, you know, the, every opportunity you get to, to pull your energy away and, and read and meditate and whatever. There's something about recognizing the power of the, the energy of the 12th house. Unfortunately, you, you'll need a, a pretty accurate time of birth for that. So that's just for those that are, um, um, can, can do that for others of you I, I apologize I can't give you any, any more insight into that 12th house aspect because it's going to be you I would you could do trial and error and recognize when your body's calling you to go into that stage and the likelihood is that'll be uh, the 12th house um but yeah the recent past is the queen of wands the queen of wands I feel like is you 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 becoming magnetic you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger your um, confidence is getting higher and higher and higher and because of that you're exuding a lot of, of, of wonderful energy 
In fact, you're feeling very good at this point. Very, very good. Your advice is the King of Swords. The King of Swords' advice is to just continue seeing things from a higher perspective. I'm seeing it in the light. See his tarot. He's at the top. He's communicating with his spirit animals. He sees everything from his vantage point. It's also saying to me here about these people that you're triggering in your environment. It just reminds me, the King of Swords is, um, it was a it was the energy of that same deck, Lightseers. I was looking out of the window in the coffee shop and I had two magpies that were on the roof above. One was flying higher, the other one was catching up. The other one was flying higher, the other one was catching up. So it's like put faith into the people that, if you embody your full self, if you're embodying your full self and you're having a fantastic life, you will inspire others because they'll be like, I want what they're having. I want what they're drinking. I want what they're eating because whatever it is, is working. So be the inspiration, be the war be the light warrior in the sense of just having hope and faith in, in others taking notice. They may ridicule you right now but like they always say, you know, first they laugh, then they join. Um, there's some wonderful things coming here. Your outcome is the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups is preparing for an offering. Something is being offered for you. It will be your soul's goal with the, the sun here. I feel like at this stage is when you start getting excited. You start to um, know that something's coming. It's like, I, I think I did a, 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 one of those what do they call them, shorts, um, you feel it coming. And that's this kind of energy. You're also gonna be seeing energies, like I say. If we look, it's kind of like the Loch Ness Monster here. Um, so, I'm not suggesting that you're seeing the Loch Ness Monster. If you do, do, uh, uh, do report back. However, this is more a case of you are um, seeing the subtle energies. You're, you're recognizing things. You might be seeing auras. You might be. There's, there's a heightened sensitivity here, and dear medicine is going to help you through this process. So I want to see where the tower is, as well as the emperor for the Mars in Aries, and I also want to see where the high priestess is with temperance. It's like the, the high priestess is whispering something to you here about keeping going, to not lose hope in something. So the Emperor is with the Devil and the Eight of Wands. So you are triggering somebody here to face their demons. You might be one of those that um, people start showing their true colours around because your energy does that to them. Um, this could be, it's, it's, for some strange reason, it's reminding me of that sort of joke um, with woman had, had saged and the kids were all complaining oh that, that, that that's horrible that's horrible they said i bet it is demons <laughs> it's like your energy is 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 forcing the demons to the surface so you might be you might be confronted by a lot of and when i say demons i just mean like negative energies um you might be confronted with a lot of negative energies during this stage because you, you, you you're energetically extracting it out of them and it's, it's, it's because of this distillation, this purification, those final remnants, those little devil energies that have been stuck in our etheric body, you know, been there for time, lifetimes after lifetimes, all coming to the surface to be released here. The tower is with the strength card and the ace of swords. Keep doing it, keep being the catalyst. This is the breakthrough. This is Raven Magic as well with the um, uh, the Ginkgo Biloba in the Herbal Astrology. Strength and Tau. If, for me, this is, this is what I said earlier about obstacles are easily, easily overcome during this stage. Because if you're ever going to get the Tower, you get the Strength card. Tower and the Strength together, no issues. Temperance is with the Hangman and the Two of Swords. To surrender to the unseen right now. There's a there's a bigger plan at play, and the high priestess is whispering. She is whispering. Uh, with the high priest, the high priest is whispering with the four of wands and the five of wands. Interesting. Whatever's blocking the four of wands, which is the 
complete coming together of the masculine and feminine, but it's also the emperor and the empress together. So this is maybe divine counterpart, whatever it is. Whatever turmoil or chaos is, is part of the process, six of swords. Last card, the nine of swords, the tower hits the lovers. So this, it's like you, you reach this stage and then you trigger the downward effect that then hits whoever this other person is. And again, it doesn't have to be a romantic aspect. But what it is, is your energy is affecting the ones that it needs to affect. Putting you in a very, very powerful position. What do I want? I want two quick ones. Let's do a yogic path. And let's get a spirit card as well. Sarah, uh, yeah, I wanted that purely because um, it just backs up what we just said. That's the crown chakra. You're going to be flooded with a lot of energy in your crown chakra, which can cause a lot of uncomfortable energies, headaches, um, a lot of download information. You might be feeling tired. Your sleep pattern might be thrown with that nine of swords at the, at the bottom. But this is where it's important to still show up, to still find peace in whatever this is. Um, lovely. Blossom, beautiful. Patience, self-love and acceptance. Yeah, acceptance is the sun. Shamanista, illumination, guidance and transformation at the bottom. So, Blossom. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Um, it's also a quick message from Lilith as well. Patience, self-love, acceptance. When it's all true at the same time, place your gaze toward the sky. For at times there is no rhyme or reason. All has its own season. And it raised you, it buried you. So bloom. This card is a message that you don't need to become something better or different for your brilliance within to blossom and be celebrated. You are perfect as you are and right where you are at this moment. There is no one and no thing on earth more worthy of love than you. Just love yourself and let yourself be loved right where you're at and blossom as you true as who you truly are, which is so beautiful. And that's what I mean by to reach this stage. I'm, not, I'm causing no offence here by calling you Tesco value. Uh, when you've reached this stage, you've done fantastically well. This is just like next level purification, you know. But accept yourself where you are right now, which is fantastic. But it's also a card 40, which is one of the situations here. Um, sublimation spiritual magic spirit soul vibration and frequency are invisible superpowers we all possess when you are in alignment these spiritual forces magnetize draw and manifest your experience on this physical plane you are activating your light body the belief is that you have a spiritual field surrounding your physical form acting as a light vessel the ancient egyptians called this the merkaba which is hebrew for chariot when you are aligned with and living with your soul's purpose, your light body will vibrate higher, drawing in support, abundance, joy and elation. You can navigate your reality with no resistance, suffering or fear. This is true spiritual empowerment. The scientific definition of sublimation is the shift of a solid substance into gas form with the use of heat without moving through the liquid phase. Like when dry ice turns into vapour. During the magnum opus, this is when the physical ascends to the spiritual. Practically speaking, you can mentally mould your intentions and bring them into reality through your physical form. The sublimation phase requires a faith in the unseen and a deep trust in the universe to guide you towards your highest good. Integrate your imagination, thoughts, feelings and emotions and spirit into your physical form. Notice what exists in other dimensions. There's that energy I saw in the Knight of Cups. Like creative ideas, concepts or visions and when one resonates, bring it down into solid reality through action. Candle magic is a powerful form of divination. Typically, this is performed through a ritual where candles are dressed with herbs and oils to reach a goal or access a certain energy. This is how you blend the physical form into the spirit through fire. Look for a ritual that fits you and incorporate it into your alchemy journey. You are tapping into the ethereal power of your being. The, this essence is attracting a bright new reality. Wow. Guys, um, you're on the last step. So whatever is taking place here, get comfortable finding a peace 
and the rest will follow. Bye.